as always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video now and attempt to solve the question on your own before moving on. A good idea to start this problem would be to draw a simple picture. So here we have the sledge being pulled by a rope. We've projected a line in a horizontal direction, we've even labeled it horizontal, to show that the angle that the rope is making with the horizontal is 20 degrees. Now for part A, in order to find the tension present in the rope, we would want to draw a free body diagram of the sledge. Now the sledge is at the center of this diagram and there are four forces acting on it. We have the gravitational force pointing straight down. We have the surface pushing up on the sledge, which is known as the normal force. We have the applied tension force that's present in the rope and pulling the sledge over to the right. And then we have the kinetic frictional force, which is equal to a coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, multiplied by the normal force. And then we can add the 20 degree angle into the diagram as well. We'll notice that three of the four forces point directly on one of the axes. So for example, mg points along the y-axis, as does the normal force. The kinetic frictional force points along the x-axis. It's the tension only that's acting at an angle. And in that case, what we need to do is break it up into both an x and a y component. Now we can see that the x component is adjacent to the 20 degree angle. That means we can represent the x component as t cosine of 20 degrees. The y component is opposite to the 20 degree angle, so we can represent that as t sine of 20 degrees. And once we have broken the tension or any other force into its x and y components, we can remove the resultant of that force and focus exclusively on the components. So we're going to take away this tension force from the diagram now and leave behind its x and y components. Now our next step is to note that the sledge is being pulled at a constant speed. And a constant speed tells us that the sum of the forces in the x direction must equal zero, as will the sum of the forces in the y direction. We'll begin to plug into the y direction, noting that there are three forces acting in the y direction. There is the upward and positive normal force, the upward and positive t sine 20, and the downward and thus negative mg. We're going to solve this equation for the normal force by adding mg to both sides of the equation and subtracting t sine 20 also from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we can see that the normal force is equal to mg minus t sine 20. This is a result that we're going to hold on to. Let's turn to the sum of the forces in the x direction next. In the x direction, we will notice that there are only two forces acting. We have the positive t cosine of 20 and the negative mu k times the normal force. Now we can recall that we had solved for an expression for the normal force, and we can plug that in to the equation right here for that normal force. Next, we can distribute the minus mu k to both terms that are inside of the brackets. Notice to the second term, when we distributed the minus to that minus here, it became a plus. Now remember, our goal is to solve for tension, and to do that, we can add the mu k mg term over to the right side. The remaining two terms on the left side both contain tension t, so we can factor it out of the equation. Now when you factor the t, what's left behind, of course, is the cosine of 20 for the first term, and then mu k sine of 20 for the second term. And since there's a multiplication between tension and this entire term in parentheses, we can divide both sides of the equation by that term in parentheses. And what will happen on the left side is that parentheses term will cancel, leaving behind just tension, and then the right side will look like the following. We're finally ready to compute the value of tension by plugging in all the known values. Remember that mu k was given as 0.5. The mass of the sledge would be 18 kilograms. And of course, g is known as 9.8. So here we have the known values plugged in. And you should get approximately 79.4. And then the unit would be newtons since we're calculating a force. And that will turn out to be the correct answer for the tension in the rope. Now that's a result that we'll hold on to and we can move on to part B which asks how much work is done by the rope on the sledge. Well we know that work is equal to a force multiplied by the cosine of a particular angle times the displacement. Now for the angle we recall that the tension force was acting at a 20 degree angle relative to the direction of movement of the sledge. We assume the sledge is moving in the rightward direction and whenever we plug an angle into the work equation we need the angle between the direction of motion of the object 
and the force in question. So that angle was 20 degrees. Now, of course, we're calculating the work done by the rope, and we just calculated the force that the rope was exerting. It was 79.4 newtons, so that's going to go in there. And then the displacement was given in the question as being 20 meters. And after we plug in those known values, we should calculate a work of approximately 1,492 joules. That's equivalent to 1.492 kilojoules, just in case you need to report the answer in those terms. Now on to part C, which asks us, what is the mechanical energy lost due to friction? It is important to note that mechanical energy lost due to friction is another phrase for the work done by friction. So this question is really asking us to calculate another work, but this time the work done by the frictional force. So when we calculate the work done by friction, we have to plug in the frictional force, of course. Now we look at the free body diagram, we can see that the frictional force is equal to mu k times the normal force. But we might also notice that the frictional force could equally be represented by t cosine of 20. Now why would that be? Well, remember, it's moving at constant speed. So that means that any force that's acting in this direction must be balanced by force acting in that direction. In other words, the kinetic frictional force should be equal in magnitude to t cosine 20. So we can actually plug in t cosine of 20 in for the frictional force when we calculate the work done by friction. When we plug in for the angle, we have to remember that the displacement is to the right, whereas the frictional force is pointing to the left. And of course, the angle between that force and displacement would be 180 degrees. And then the displacement was given as 20.0 meters. Remember the tension we had calculated earlier as 79.4 newtons, so we'll plug that in. And when we plug this into our calculator, lo and behold, we get negative 1,492 joules, which if converting to kilojoules would be negative 1.492 kilojoules. Notice the work done by friction is negative of the value of the work done by the rope that we calculated in part B. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You are also welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.